So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial on how to uh, set a background uh, in a page because it's something that does come up quite a lot and it's good to learn it early. Um, it's, an, it's a CSS technique, um, at least the way I do it. Um, you, you can use HTML but better form, it's just better it's better off to do it this way, you get more control over however what you're doing. So if I give you an idea, we've got a, a blank white web page here and um, we can actually um, set the background by going to our code um, and I could do it. Um, I could do it just to keep things simple, so there's no no confusion. Um, I might just do it in, inside a, a style tag inside the header. Um, you could do it in an external style sheet like this one above, but I'm going to do it inside a style tag. And and if you remember from your CSS, you can um, you can actually set CSS on um, on elements in a page. And and there's one element in a page that you might not think of very often. But it's actually the body element. It's the it's the element that covers the whole visible page, and you can actually you can actually style that element, and that element is quite powerful because you anything you do to that element will control the whole uh, the settings for the whole page. So so what we're going to do here is we're going to say body, and and we're going to set a rule, and we're going to say well we can say the background. Um, let's just set it black for the moment and, and see see what that does. Um, we can save that and, and we can uh, refresh this and suddenly it's gone black which uh, might not uh, help us very much right now but at least it tells us at least it tells us what we're doing and uh, we can now start playing around with it. So, so we can also do um, several different um, settings. There is background, in fact I might have it here if I bring it up, CSS background Let's see if we can bring up the the, the uh, yeah. So so we've got we've got all these different properties. We've got background color. We've got background image. Uh, we've got background image set position. Repeat horizontally or vertically. Shorthand property. Um, so so um, so here's here's the uh, here's the sort of all of the the different ones all together. Um, so I can actually set these. So so I can if I copy all of the oh if I copy all of these. Uh, and I'll go through them one by one. Um, so let's put them in here and see what happens. So there we have all of them. Now let's just uh, space it out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So space that out. Space that out. So this is the definer for each each rule for the background. Uh, and I'll, I'll go through how to how to do that. So so say we have a, a background color. Um, and we want that to be set to maybe blue, um, and, and we can we can set this. Um, if you remember anything about, um, I might do a separate video on CSS colors. But there's three different types of colors. There's uh, there's RGB, there's RGBA, uh, there's hexadecimal, and the um, and there's just sort of uh, just a literal word. I, I'm not quite sure what you call it. But basically, you can just name it like we have done here. So I'll, I might do another video on on those. But but for the moment, we're just setting it to blue. The background image, you can set an image here by doing um, this. You do URL um, and then you and then you set the image. So so test.jpg for instance. Um, and then what you do is you do background repeat and uh, you, you uh, standard if you don't set the repeat it will just repeat in both directions so but maybe if I just demonstrate how that actually looks before we go any further and um, and then and then you'll get an idea of what's going on here so you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the image that's already on our page here um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, take this URL I'm gonna get rid of the image itself because we don't want to we don't want to get confused between which image is which so I'm gonna get remove this image that we've got on here so save that, refresh that. It's now blue and there's no picture anymore. Uh, so if we go back to here and we go up here and we set the URL for this test image to this, to lion.jpg. And then we get rid of all these because we're not doing, you're not using these at the moment. And then we save that and we refresh the page. And you'll see that there's a, there's a lion picture, but it's actually repeated. You might see that it's repeated down the page. There's another one down here. And there's also another one over here. You might see the join here. You can't really see it very well on here. But 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 basically, if you don't set a repeating pattern, then it will uh, just repeat automatically in both directions. So we're going to say no repeat. You can also say repeat x or repeat y. Um, both those um, 
both of those allow you to repeat either in the y direction which is along uh, um, sorry up uh, vertical up down or x which is across so it's just from side to side so background attachment um, now you know I don't use background attachment uh, very much so so um, probably best to um, look at the background attachment uh, uh, tag to sort of get an idea for what it is. Set whether a background image is fixed or scrolls with the rest. Of, oh, I do know that one. Um, yes, yeah, so the background attachment is either fixed or it just scrolls. As standard, it would it would um, scroll uh, scroll uh, with the page uh, and you can also set it to fixed. So we could we could set it um, just normally. We can just show we can just show the background repeat here um, and um, so, so now it shouldn't be. Oh, hang on. What's going on there? Uh, no repeat. Ah, oh, yes, I see. The um, the uh, semicolon there needs to be in. So let's just get that. Um, so so um, what? So, so let's just demonstrate that now. So save that. Go back to here. Refresh this page, and there we go. It's it's not repeating. It's just sitting there in the middle of the page. Uh, and and then um, we can go for the next one. So let's uh, now let's see background attachment at the moment it's set to just scrolling but we say if we set it to fixed what will that make it look like um, so if we save that and we refresh you'll see that now the background stays even though we're scrolling the stuff on top this text on which is on top of the page moves but the, what's underneath doesn't move so the the, the 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 image doesn't move it stays there so you can actually keep something there and sort of it's a bit it's a bit of a sort of a, a trick to if you want to show stuff up underneath all the time uh, and then finally let's do background position which has two indices it has the the x axis and the y axis and you just do it in percent you can do it in percentages and also in just in um i think it's em so let's just have a quick look at um uh, a quick look at the background position because it will define it better on here than, than I would ever be able to explain. Background position. Um, we have uh, we have uh, left top, left center. These are sort of basic values. You can also do a percentage value, and you can just do a number which just uh, just has um, units and pixels. And then you can also inherit it from the from the element that it's that above. And there's no element above uh the the body the body is the biggest element is the one that contains everything else so let's uh let's just have a quick try let's just try maybe uh 20 across and 20 down and, and let's see what that does uh, save that and refresh this and you'll see it pushes it down slightly into the page now there's two more things before I finish this video that are important. Um, now, people say, you know, I want this in the center. Well, you can use the the, the center 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 um, uh, definer to do, to get that. So center center. So we'll save that and uh, refresh this, and you'll see that you're you're getting it in the center of the page and and in the center as much as possible because it's so large. Uh, it's in the center of, of here as well, but you'll see there's now a gap. It's aligned in the center. Now that's a nice that's not a nice effect. Um, but sometimes what you might do um, is you might also put it inside another element. So we could also put it inside the header, and that's very easy. All we do is we change. So instead of setting it to to, to set a background for the body, um, we can set it just for the H1 tags. And so if we save that, it will now do kind of this kind of fancy thing and you'll see now interestingly that you've actually got this very funky effect that I've I haven't used very much before but it looks very cool you, you're seeing the the top of the image here and then the rest of the image here and then when you scroll down you get to see more of it here because it's inside each of these h1 elements and you know what that's an effect I've never even seen before and and I might actually start using that in some of my websites because that's quite funky uh, but uh, that that's that aside the point was that you can put the image into other elements outside the body. You can put it into H1 tags or into div tags or wherever you want to put an image, you know, display an image in the background. And it's useful because you can um, you can actually uh, load the image once and then reuse it multiple times. Uh, and you can also, it, it sometimes it makes it easier if, if you want to put lots of text in and you don't want to get caught up with sort of aligning the image and so on. The, if the image is sort of built into the element as a background, then it makes it easier to insert text and content on top of it. Um, maybe that will make more sense when you actually start building websites. But it, it, if we just um, set it back to the body for the moment, and and I'm going to do something else a bit funky as well now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to 
put all of these into one instruction in the CSS. And, and you should have seen this before in my CSS videos. But what you can do is you can say background, which is kind of the, the overall rule, and then we can just, in order, set a space between each of these definers, and it will actually, it will actually uh, basically run through. And instead of having to have lots of rules, it just has, it just has these. And this is the uh, this is the order. So, so if you were to do this, if you were to write this out, it should have exactly the same effect as if you didn't. Like there we go, perfect in the center of the page. So I think that's uh, pretty much everything that you need to know about uh, doing a background. I've done a lot to spend a lot of time on this. Um, so ten minutes. So uh, hopefully I haven't confused you, and hopefully uh, you can use this knowledge when you're building your own website. One last thing, actually, just before I go, um, some people sometimes say to me, but how do I get a picture that is faded into the background? And here's the trick. You need to do graphic manipulation. You need a product like Fireworks or Photoshop or uh, there's, there's, there's uh, open source ones that are available like uh, new, uh, GNU, I, th I believe, and, and things like this. You need to take the image and you need to set the background to a transparency. And that's for another video. So you, you need to go away and learn about graphics and uh, graphic design if you want to be able to fade the image into the same background color as, as your website.